Greetings, everyone. Author Wayne Thomas Batson here. And I hope, like me, you're safe and snug during these very unusual times. And I think entertainment has become even more important than ever, since we have a lot of extra hours on our hands. I thought I would read to you a little bit from my first book, The Door Within. And it's chapter 28, called Fallon's Stare. It's my favorite, favorite scene to read. So, uh, one bit of warning. If there are any little ones about, you may not want to listen in too closely. There are a few, are a few creepy, creepy parts. At the base of the mountain, some fifty yards away, a small but obvious cave-like entrance gouged the smooth face of rock. Aiden threw away his shoes, took fury in both hands, and approached. The entrance had no door, fence, or gate of any kind. It was simply a rectangular opening cut right into the side of the mountain. On a large stone next to the entrance was carved an odd and unnerving poem. Aiden read it to himself and shivered. Ye have come to Fallon Stair, but enter not ye unaware, for better men than thee have fled. They that entered soon were dead. The darkness spins your mind with fright as you descend into her night. Beyond the steps, a labyrinth waits, with dangers untold and treasures great. Know ye this as you travel the maze, lest ye fall under Fallon's gaze. There is one path alone to the light of day, and death will come if you lose your way. With considerable dread, Aiden looked into the opening. The diminishing late afternoon sun provided just enough light for him to see that Fallon's stair was actually a spiral staircase. It curled down and in before disappearing into the darkness. This was no spooky legend or an imaginary boogeyman. To step down would be to enter a living nightmare. Either Aiden faced almost certain death under these dark mountains, or he turned back, allowing the wretched knights of Paragor to take Gwen and the others into a nightmarish land of torment and pain. Aiden took a deep breath he simply could not allow his friend and the other innocent glimpses to die while he did nothing. Never alone, he said aloud, and he stepped out of the waning sunlight into the darkness of Fallon's stair. Aiden held Fury out in front and began to descend. It was some comfort to have such a mighty blade as Fury with him. Even so, he took each step cautiously, stopping from time to time to listen for anything that might be traveling up the steps to meet him. Soon the last glimmer of faint light was gone, and Aiden found himself in the deepest darkness he had yet encountered. Of course, the Moon Rascal tunnels were dark too, but they seemed almost cheerful compared to the smothering black that surrounded Aiden now. Holding up the sword as best he could with one hand, Aiden used the other hand to feel his way along the cold stone wall of the stair. What is that? He stopped. Aiden was certain he'd heard something down the stairs move just slightly. Aiden's heart hammered away. 
He used every last ounce of hearing ability, straining to pick up the sound again. He waited and waited, but he did not hear anything. <laughs> My mind is playing tricks on me. Venturing farther, he began wondering if the gigantic slithering beast could be silently hunting him. Or maybe it was simply waiting with its tremendous jaws open at the bottom of the stair, waiting for Aiden to blindly fall right in. Aiden didn't want to be so afraid, but his body betrayed him. Aside from his breathing and racing heart, Aiden's mouth felt full of sawdust, his throat full of gravel, and every muscle in his body was as tense as a bowstring. To make matters worse, the temperature began to fall. Aiden was cold, for a tunic and a pair of leather breeches did nothing to turn away the eerie chill of the underground. Aiden guessed that he must be a mile or more beneath the surface. And still, the stairs went down. The sound again! This time closer! It was too much for Aiden. He simply reacted. Grasping the mighty fury with both hands, he swung the sword frantically in front of him. It clashed and clanged off the stone walls, sending sparks flying in a near-deafening metallic ring, echoing up and down the stairs. Aiden cringed, holding the sword pitifully out in front of him. She knows I'm here now. Would Fallon come? Was this the end of the adventure? Aiden soon had an answer. Welcome, came a raspy, purring voice. The word was stretched as long as a fully exhaled breath. Icy wind swirled up the stairs. It's been so long since I've had a visitor, and a young one too, if my sense of smell is still keen. Aiden heard a whistling as the great beast inhaled deeply. Mmm, yeah. The voice continued, exhaling. It is a young visitor, young but not glimpse kind. A nice surprise for Fallon. What brings a savory young lad into a dark, dangerous place? Hmm? Is it treasures you seek? They are here, the finest gold, the most precious silver, and simply exquisite jewels, all for the taking. Mm -hmm. Aiden was frozen. He tried several times to open his mouth to speak, but the words would not come. Pity, came the voice again. Not much to say, hmm? Then perhaps riches are not what you seek. Then could it be you've come down my stair to slay little old Fallon? Well, delectable one, is that it? The beast laughed a sinister, mocking laugh. Feeling that he'd better say something, 
lest Fallon get the wrong idea. Aiden forced himself to reply. No, I, I don't wish to harm you, he stuttered. Nor do I want to be harmed by you. I just want to get through because someone is counting on me. Well then, Fallon replied. Why didn't you say so? You're just a noble lad seeking passage, that's all. Come then. Your path leads through my little labyrinth. Come on. Don't be afraid, for though I am very hungry, yes, famished, I promise not to harm you. No, I won't even take so much as a nibble. As long as you find the right path through my maze, but you must make it all the way through your first try. The moment you make even a single wrong turn, I'll come and visit you, my delicious stranger. Is it a deal then? Hmm? But wait! Aiden stammered. There's a fave. Good then! Fallon decided. You come on down to my little maze. Mm-hmm. And I'll just sneak off to my secret hiding place. Remember, not even one wrong.